Ascension forecast for Sunday, June 23rd to Saturday, June 29th. Okay, so last week was a doozy. Of course, we were closing out Gemini season, which I think we're all very happy to now have behind us. We kicked that off with Venus and Mercury moving out of the Gemini energy into that Cancer energy, but not before they both squared off with Neptune. Of course, last week's Ascension forecast, I went into some depth and detail on some of those aspects that took place, specifically squaring off with Neptune, because of course, Neptune is helping us to kind of pull back the veil, pull back the lies, pull back the deception, the delusion, the corruption of this particular storyline that the collective is effectively bringing to an end, bringing to a close as we prepare to watch Neptune and side note, Saturn move into Aries energy early 2025. We definitely felt that energy kind of subside in the headspace just a tad with Venus and Mercury now in a water sign. But of course, we entered into that solstice gateway, the pressure, the energy just absolutely debilitating most of us with those ascension symptoms. And we finally entered into cancer season here on the 20th. But of course, here on the 21st, Friday evening, if you're with me in the chat, first of all, thank you for being here. But we are just about an hour away, a little bit, depending on where it is that you're at in the world, an hour-ish away from having the full moon in Capricorn peak at a one degree. So, of course, we are just kind of... I'm going to say being beat down, broken up, if you will, with all of these energies in order to make us a little bit more raw, more open, more vulnerable to some of the changes that we are definitely going through, whether we want to or not. This solstice energy, the full moon in Capricorn, of course, being uh, the first part of two back to back full moon in Capricorns. We'll talk about that here in just a second giving us a different perspective on the obstacles, on the challenges, on the endings, on the closures that are 100% taking place in order to free us up to pivot and start pursuing a path that is much more aligned to our higher self. So this week, of course, we're coming into the week hot, still in the solstice energy, still kind of adjusting to this cancer energy and still very much influenced by this full moon in Capricorn. But we will be building towards the last quarter moon in Aries energy popping off on the 28th, the day before Saturn, the Lord of Karma himself, ruler of this full moon in Capricorn story that we're going to be kind of, you know, unpacking and unfolding over this next month, Saturn will be going retrograde. And that is officially closing out the month of June. So it's almost like we have this wham, bam, thank you, ma'am, coming into cancer season with the solstice energy, with this full moon and cap. And then we get to sit in it for the majority of the week with not a whole lot going on, just some, you know, minor aspects, let's say, kind of amplifying the storyline. And then we reach a particular crisis point, if you will, in realizing what we have to begin And that comes at a very important time, I would say, in order for Saturn to go retrograde. We're going to talk about that in just a second. But of course, if you want to do a deep dive in all of these particular energetic shifts, the June energy forecast is out for your listening pleasure. Your zodiac forecast is there for your listening pleasure. The moon guide, the cancer season e-guide is there for your, let's call it energetic assistance pleasure. And there is a whole lot of resources out there to help you stay ahead of the energies. We're going to talk about that in a little bit more detail here in a second after I just cross a couple of things off of my list, starting with the thank yous. I want to thank you for being here. I want to thank you for liking, for sharing, for subscribing, for commenting, for dropping emojis in the comment section below. I want to just thank you for the continued love and support. As you may have noticed, the last two weeks, my YouTube channel has taken yet another hit. The algorithm just loves to mess with me. And so I thank those of you that have also kind of stepped up and kind of made some financial donations as well. Those particular, although maybe small in your mind, huge in my mind, 
helping to make up for what YouTube has basically been robbing me of, taking away subscribers, taking away likes, and shadow banning some of my videos, which of course has a major impact on, you know, the the support, the financial support that I rely on here on YouTube. So thank you so much for that. I know I already kind of listed it off, but again, Cancer Season e-guide is there for your downloading pleasure. The Cancer Season e-guide is the energetic Bible that is basically going to help you get through Cancer Season. All of the astro shifts are in there. We're going to, you know, move through that particular guide. There are journal prompts there. There's a lot of information that needs to awaken within us over the course of this next season, Cancer Season specifically, because it is very karmic in nature in order for us to understand where it is that we're coming from and where it is that we're going from here. And with that particular little, let's call it sentence or uh, visual, if you will, I'm gonna encourage you to download the moon guide. We go into some depth and detail on what this first of two back-to-back -back full moon and Capricorns are all about. And it's very much analyzing, where do we go from here? Many of us finding ourselves in situations that we weren't planning on being on, Many of us finding ourselves amongst the major changes that we had no power and control over. Many of us seeing the absolute deconstruction and collapse of certain aspects in our physical realm that we were not planning on saying goodbye to this early in our vision, in our goal, in our dream. But it's karmic in nature. What our ego self think is best for us, our higher self, typically speaking, laughs at, right? Our ego selves, we do not see the forest past the trees. We are only kind of gauging what we think we want, what we think we need, what we think we desire based off of the physical options that are available to us here in the physical realm. Our higher self knows better. Our higher self knows that our ego chooses people, places, and things that are not meant for us that will essentially slow us down, block us from where it is that we're trying to go. And so again, even though you may be a little bit beaten and bruised from you know some of the hardships that have been thrown your way, please understand that it is not a loss, okay? We are not losing anything. You cannot lose anything that is meant for you. Some things must come to an end. Some things weren't meant for you to begin with, but your ego decided that, hey, I'm gonna take this little detour into this little dark alley and then have the audacity to cry and complain when you get robbed, when you get jumped, when you get taken for all it is that you have going for you. Again, tough love life lessons that we have to learn here. And if we were in alignment with our higher self and if we did trust the universe and we did trust the greater grander plan, we wouldn't perceive it as a loss, as a punishment, as something that is being taken away from us. But that is very much where many of us are at in this current situation. Again, going to take a full month in order to realize what it is that we can do about it, where it is that we can fully accept and release some of the situations that didn't turn out the way that we were hoping that they would. This particular month is very, I know, you're going to say, yeah, I know, it's karmic. Yeah, I know, everybody out there in the new age world talking about karma, karma, karma. We're in cardinal season. A cardinal season is a time for change. When you are dealing with the moon in her rulership in cancer season, which rules over our emotions, our unconscious self, our karma, our soul, our spirit, and what sits across from cancer energy, which is Capricorn energy, which is the great manifester of the Zodiac, who is ruled over by Saturn, the Lord of Karma himself. How can we not talk about karma, right? So, you know, we're being kind of kicked out of storylines that weren't meant for us. We're being kicked out of soul contracts that weren't meant for us. And the longer that we're gonna sit around and whine and cry about it, again, inner child energy from cancer energy, instead of bossing up and being the adult with the roles and responsibilities, the power and the control to actually fix certain situations, again, Capricorn energy, the longer we sit around and cry about it, the more we are choosing to suffer, okay? So this is kind of where it is that we're at. It's not going to be this hard through the whole cancer season. Um, specifically, fixed signs, I'm speaking to you. We need to get to the, I'm gonna call it, that quarter moon phase on the 28th we have to get to that point before we're going to see some relief 
in the pressure that these fixed signs have been in. And I know you're going to say, well, why fixed signs? I thought we were in a cardinal season. Well, we are, and the cardinal signs are going through their own growing pains. However, we have to talk about the fact that the fixed signs, specifically because of Mr. Pluto, the great transformer himself, who does give us, give us an opportunity to rebirth ourselves, to resurrect ourselves, to kind of renew ourselves, but we do so through complete damage and destruction of the old realm, the old version of self. And so that's why my fixed signs are feeling like, oh my goodness, my head's going to explode. I can't take anymore. And just so you know, fixed signs, we're talking Taurus, Leo, Scorpio, Aquarius. That's who I'm talking about right now. And you can blame Mr. Pluto for that particular tension point. The cardinal season is definitely triggering the cardinal signs. So again, Aries, Cancer, Libra, Capricorn, I'm talking to you. This is the major growth point. This is the major change point. And so we're all going through it, okay? So I know mutable signs, I left you out, but guess what, mutable signs, we just moved out of Gemini season. And I would say that my mutable signs are exhausted so much that you're not even going to pep up. You're not even gonna put your hand up and say, hey, what about us? Cause y'all just wanna curl up in the corner and say, you know what, it's better that she's not talking about us because we need a break. Y'all need a break. I get that. Okay. So here's the thing. Gemini. Okay. Virgo. Sag. Pisces. Y'all are under a different influence right now. Y'all are going through a different growth spurt right now versus the cardinal and the fixed signs. Not to say that it's any less, but y'all have some more favorable planets working in your favor, i.e. Uh, Jupiter. Okay. Y'all have that working in your favor. The fixed signs are over here with Mr. Pluto, who's just ready to light the whole world on fire and call it a, call it a day. Uh, the fixed signs are dealing with that. And of course, the cardinal signs are all up in this karmic retribution that the collective is going in, but they specifically are going through personally because again, cardinal energy, cardinal signs. So bottom line is we're all going through it. We're all going through something different. We're all going through a growing pain phase. It doesn't feel good. Remember back when you were a little kid and your legs started popping off when you were sleeping and you were just screaming bloody murder in the middle of the night and your parents just kind of just, you know, snuffed you off and said, oh, growing pains, you'll get over it. You'll grow out of it. Well, in the moment, it didn't feel like you were going to grow out of it, like you were just going to grow through it. It felt like you were being destroyed from the inside out. And that's exactly what needs to happen in most cases, energetically and spiritually speaking, in order for us to make a change. That's why we go through the hardships. That's why we go through the pain. That's why we go through the suffering. Does not feel good to heal. Does not feel good to grow. Does not feel good to evolve. But that's what we're here to do. So we got to buck up a little bit. Tap more into that Capricorn energy that doesn't want to sit around, whine and complain and cry about things that didn't even need to happen in the first place. We need to boss up. We need to be better. We need to accept reality as it is. And we need to move the F on. Okay, so I want to talk about, yeah, I kind of touched on, you know, a couple of things there that I'll probably repeat myself about here when I jump into the ascension symptoms. But I just want to talk about the, let's call it progress of the moon this week. We are kicking the week off with the moon in Capricorn. We are ending the week with the moon in Aries. So Aries energy brings us a fresh start, a clean slate, if you will, brings us a different mood, a different attitude, especially to rip the rear view mirror off. We don't want to look back. We know where it is that we're coming from. We still feel it. We still have the, the scars, the marks, the bruises to prove that we just went through that particular battle. And I think the interesting part is, because you know me and patterns and behaviors, so I got to share them with you. I think the interesting part for me it's just seeing the evolution of the week unfold. So I'm going to just give you a little bit of a, a rattle down, if you will, on what we got coming at us this week. So first of all, starting with Sunday, it's going to be a moon day. We have seven different aspects popping off, all seven of them involving the moon. The moon is going to be transiting from Capricorn energy to Aquarius energy. Why do we think that's favorable, you may ask? Well, let me tell you. The problems get illuminated in the Capricorn energy, the blockages, the challenges, the restrictions, everything becomes heavy and weighted. It is an earth sign, by the way, Capricorn energy. So we are very much illuminated 
to what the F the problem actually is. And especially full moon and Capricorn, we should all be very, very aware of the list of problematic issues that we don't want to be in as of right now. When the moon shifts into Aquarius energy, the Aquarius energy allows us to act as the observer, which means that we kind of leave our bodies in a certain way. We're not as emotionally and mentally connected to the physical form. We can kind of float out, be a third party observer to what it is that we're actually going through. That Aquarius energy is futuristic and visionary. So it means that we're able to see, yeah, okay, there you are, you're in a you know shit storm of trouble right now, you're in a problematic area, you're confused, you're lacking clarity, but guess what? I still have a vision on where it is that I would like to end up, so now let's sit down and let's look at the gap, let's look at the distance between where it is that we're currently at, which yep, doesn't feel very good, it's not favorable, and where it is that we would like to go from here. The Aquarius energy helps us to kind of think outside of the box because a lot of the problem is that we're too close to the issues, the problems that are keeping us in a state of paralysis. And so we get to kind of bust out of ourselves, observe ourselves, observe the different issues and how they're all kind of interconnected, observe where it is that we would like to go, observe where it is that we're at and come up with some creative solutions on how it is that we may get there. We are going to, in the Aquarius energy, figure out where it is that we could do better, where it is that we could make some adjustments, where it is that we can improve. Now, keep in the back of your mind, we're in cancer season, we're overly attached to the past for the next couple of days, because again, as I previously mentioned, the first 10 degrees of cancer season, we are so immersed in the past that we don't even want to think about the present moment, let alone the future. From the 10 to the 20th degree of cancer season, especially when we have that new moon in cancer at 14 degrees, that's kind of like the halfway point where we start realizing, oh, damn, I'm holding on to a to a a rope that is essentially burning my hand off. Maybe I should let go of this attachment to the past so that it doesn't take my hand with it. We drop the burning rope. We stand in the present moment. We take a good look around and we're like, oh, wow. OK, so let's move away from the burning building in our past. And let's look at this beautiful, hopeful path that is not burning down that could lead me somewhere into the future. That is the pivot point. And then from the 20th to the 30th degree of cancer season, then we are more open, not necessarily making moves, but we are more open to thinking about the moves that we could be making. So with that being said, the moon in Aquarius will take us all the way into the early morning of Wednesday. Wednesday, we are going to see the moon shift into the Pisces energy. So we're about to wrap up a cycle here. We're about to essentially, and, and side note, Pisces is a water sign. We're in a water season. So yeah, the feels are going to be intense. Emotionally speaking, we are here to have the waves of our past, of our emotion, of our memories crash upon us to erode away the parts of us that are still very attached to the past to reveal a new surface below, okay? So this is like eroding away the fake facade, the mask, the shell, right? Talking about cancer season, represented by the crab. When you remove the shell of the crab, he looks tough, he looks scary, he looks like he could, you know, pinch you, F you up a little bit. But really, when you crack open that hard ass shell or soft shell, depending on, you know, crab, uh, there's nothing but ooey and gooeyness in there. OK, that's a defense mechanism. That's a protection type of mechanism that we all have that we tap into greatly to protect what it is that we have, what we've been doing, our vulnerabilities, our insecurities. So when the moon moves into Pisces energy, it's some water on water action. Yes, there's a lot of emotions, but there's also a lot of imagination, a lot of creative energy. There's also this renewal taking place in our soul and in our spirit. And it is a very beneficial thing, even though it kind of puts us into la la land, we need to tap out of reality. We need to move into la la land in order to conjure up a goal, a vision, a dream that now we can pursue. It is basically the point of letting go of the past and being more excited about what is to come in the future. Now we're going to have another moon day on Thursday under that moon in Pisces energy. Uh, let me also just say, side note, the moon is going to come up to conjunct Saturn on Thursday as well. Um, that's important because that's an emotional reset where we have been basically, I'm going to say resisting 
accepting the changes of the past, resisting the roles and responsibilities that we need to boss up to, uh, resisting the new willpower and amount of discipline that we need to have within ourselves in order to shift our perspective, shift our belief system, in order to orient to a new possibility that now awaits us when we're bold and brave and courageous enough to stop being so focused on the past and to start being a little bit more focused on the future. So Friday is when we watch the moon move into Aries energy. And when the moon moves into Aries energy, again, we want to rip that rear view mirror off. We're tired of thinking about the past. Granted, we still are in cancer season. So there's going to be this like inner realm cha-cha-cha of, oh, I'm so immersed in the past. Did you remember that? Did you think about this? Did you, you know, have a flashback of that? Versus I'm tired of thinking about it. I'm tired of, of sitting in the memories. I'm tired of thinking in emotional ways. And then the Aries energy is like, okay, let's take action. Let's do something new. Let's get this energy out. Let's look for a clean slate. Let's look for a new beginning. Now, before that happens, the moon is going to make that aspect with Neptune, again, at the final degrees of this Pisces energy before moving into that Aries energy. And that reset is putting us in a totally different perspective and understanding of the karmic chapters that we are now having to let go and release before we can actually start moving towards the new. We have some very interesting energies building up on Friday, especially right before the last quarter moon pops off in this Aries energy. We have Mercury getting into the boxing ring with Chiron. This is essentially us beating ourselves up, breaking ourselves down, and kicking our own asses in a way so that we stop running back to the things that we fought so hard to grow out of and to get away from. We have the last quarter moon in Aries energy. Again, that's a tension point. That's a conflict point. That's a growing pain point. And then we have all these beautiful interaction with Jupiter. Jupiter swoops in and he starts kind of restoring our faith. He starts restoring our optimism, our confidence within ourselves. It's a beautiful jam. And then what happens? Saturday, we are in this Aries energy. So emotionally speaking, we want to start fresh. Now, again, cancer season. So there's still some, you know, residue, some fragments of the past that we need to wrap up. But emotionally speaking, we're tapping into a new mood, new attitude. The moon is going to conjunct, team up with that north node. So we're seeing steps forward. We're seeing the progress. We're seeing the ability to grow, to heal, to evolve. You know, Venus is going to sextile Mars. That's the masculine and feminine energies coming together, working together in order to wrap up the emotional wounds of the past and get us very anchored and centered into building ourselves up in the present moment for what it is that we want to do, what it is that we want to pursue moving forward. Just before Saturn goes retrograde. Okay. When Saturn goes retrograde, this is like, the karmic chapters figuring themselves out. There's going to be a lot of external movement that you're not going to have power and control over. The key here is to move inward and to boss ourselves up, restructure our inner realm of thoughts, of belief, right? Because if you can't change the shitty situations going on outside of you, the only thing that you can do is change how you react and respond to the world around you, which means that you need to be the change that you wish you could be in your external realm. We have a four and a half, five month chapter of Saturn being retrograde. Uh, spoiler alert, Neptune's going to go retrograde too. They're both in Pisces energy and they're both trying to wrap up the loose ends of this particular chapter because both of them We'll be moving into Aries energy early 2025. That is when the new version of self is fully anchored in. That is when we are tapped in to our creator abilities. And that is when, collectively speaking, we start contributing to new earth. How do we do that, you may ask? Because you build the new earth within you. New earth is a place of consciousness, a place of enlightenment, a place of awareness. Right now, we are defragging the computer system. We're getting rid of all of these old pictures, all of these old files, all of these old apps, because they're slowing the operating system down. We need to defrag the system before we can upgrade the operating system, which essentially is this new version of self. So again, we're in the year of eight. It's time to walk the walk and talk the talk. You do not get gifted with your creator abilities if you have not passed the tests, okay? And we just went through a certain, 
let's call it graduation point coming into the solstice energy. Again, there are lower timelines that we cannot go back to, not even if you tried, okay? That's what the timeline jumps with the solstice energies and with the equinox energies are all about. It brings you to a choice point. Again, I said for many, many months now, we weren't going to know what those choice points were until the end of Gemini season. Well, I don't know about y'all, but you either got a bitch slap of truth and reality of what isn't working, or you got a green light go ahead of what could be working towards the end of Gemini season that again, essentially karmically locked in under the solstice energy that we're still trying to understand. We're still trying to unpack. And this from now until the fall, carrying us into the fall equinox where we get another karmic reset. This is what we're going to be doing is wrapping up the aspects of the old collapsing, totally deconstructing the old ways of thinking, the old ways of believing, the old ways of doing. And we are essentially bossing our inner realm up. This is a spiritual upgrade in our inner realm to be the change that we need to be to accept the terms of our external realm that we have no power and control over. Again, may I remind you, the goal in this healing journey, in this ascension process, is to get to a state in your inner realm to be happy and enjoy the craziness and the chaos as it unfolds around you. The world is always going to be a shit show. It is always going to have ugliness in it, always going to have struggle in it, always going to challenge you. You have to get to a certain point in your inner realm to be able to find happiness and joy, peace, harmony through all of the craziness that this earth plane throws at you. That's what this is all about. And so the fact that Saturn is going to go retrograde when we just had that last quarter moon, so it clears away a lot of the anger, a lot of the frustration, a lot of the, let's call it identity crisis that many of us are going through watching certain storylines and karmic chapters come to an end that we weren't necessarily prepared for. It came on hot and heavy, right? Came out of nowhere unexpectedly, although we kind of expected it. If you've been following me or following astrology, we, we did expect it. Um, but the, I'm going to call it the um, realization that some of these things actually happen. We still haven't accepted it yet. We're living in kind of like a fantasy land, a Delulu land. You know, when something just like shocks the hell right out of you and you go through a really dramatic change, like it doesn't feel real, feels very surreal, feels very euphoric, like it's, you know, a different state of being. We're in that right now, right? We need to almost sober up a little bit in order to truly understand what just happened, what we're currently in, in order to figure out where it is that we're going from here. And again, we won't have those answers until the end of cancer season, especially with that full moon in Capricorn, that second one popping off in a very big way. So let me just say this, another interesting dynamic for you. We have Saturn go retrograde, right? On the 29th, uh, a couple of hours after Saturn goes retrograde, the moon in the Aries energy is gonna come up to and conjunct with Chiron. So this is a reset in our ego identity, right? We're not sitting in the wounds anymore. We're sitting in the aspect of healed self. We're sitting in the higher self. And then Mercury sextiles Uranus. Why is that important, you may ask? Because it's the highest level of our intellect and the lower level of our intellect on the same page working together with new insights, focused on solutions instead of the problems, focused on what we could do different instead of doing the same thing over and over and over again and expecting a different result. To me, this is a beautifully, divinely scripted power play from getting us out of the darkness, out of the funk, out of the power of problem that we're currently sitting in and into a different perspective, a different mood, a different attitude on how we're going to fix said issues. Okay, so that was just a little bit of a rundown for you. Uh, side note, don't, don't know why I feel the need to share this, but... This time last week, I thought to myself, you know what? YouTube is just kicking the ass right off of me. I'm tired of this, you know, algorithm game, I'm tired of having, you know, my financial situation controlled by AI, typically speaking. That's kind of where we're at. I'm tired of trying to fight for people to fight for themselves. I'm tired to trying of getting the, the collective on the right page. I'm tired. I know everybody's tired, but like I'm tired of doing this. 
I have been doing this now, this healing work, this, you know, collective hurrah to try and get everybody on the same page. I've been doing these energy forecasts. I've been doing all of this healing work. I've been helping people for like 20 plus years now and I'm tired. I'm exhausted. I feel like I repeat myself. I feel like I'm banging my head against a wall. This time last week, I had decided that I was going to stop doing my daily energy forecast and only do one episode per week, which would be this Ascension forecast. So I didn't tell anyone, didn't say anything. I was trying in my mind to figure out, you know, how I was going to switch things up. Um, And it's amazing to me because over this last week, now I'm not saying that y'all don't show up for me on a regular, okay? That's not what I'm trying to say at all. But over the course of this week, I have had more people leave me comments on my daily energy forecast video telling me how valuable they are, thanking me for the work that I do, trying to hit home how how important it is that I continue to do what it is that I'm doing and to not underestimate the influence and the impact that I'm having on the world around me by doing these particular forecasts. And it's like, you know, the first one I was like, oh, well, that's a little bit of a quinky dink, even though I don't believe in quinky dinks. And then the second time it was like, oh, well, that's kind of nice. Maybe I maybe I'm not seeing how important, you know, these forecasts are. And then the third one, I was like, OK, like, you know, universe being the messenger here, like I understand what's going on. And then they kept coming. So usually for me, things happen in threes. And after the three, I'm like, OK, I get it. You can shut up now. I get the message. Leave me alone. They kept coming. They kept coming. They're still coming. Even even this morning, I sat down going through all the comments that I had to reply to and just I don't know, just the verbiage has changed. I'm not saying like, I know y'all are thanking me every day for them. You tell me, oh, I'm so glad, you know, you were able to explain what I'm going through. I get those on the regular, but like specific, specific wording, like, please do not ever stop putting out these forecasts. They are so valuable. Please know how grateful I am to be able to have a shitty day and come here and understand why. And it's like, you know, when... (laughs) To think that the universe isn't listening to your inner thoughts all the time. I didn't mutter the words, I am stopping this. I am not doing this anymore. I didn't mutter those words anywhere outside of my body. It was just something in in me that I thought to myself, you know what, girl, I am tired. Let's free up some time. Like I have projects that I would like to be doing for myself that have nothing to do with this healing journey that I don't have the time or the energy to do because I consume myself with trying to put out resources, trying to put out videos, trying to put out, you know, information in order to keep everybody, you know, ahead of the energies. And I don't have time to do what I want to do for myself. And that goes against everything that I tell people. You know, I tell people, you got to put yourself first. You got to, you know, fill up your own cup. You got to do all this stuff. And then I sit here exhausted, not following my own advice. And it reaches me to a point where I'm like, you know what, I'm, I got to switch up my, my business structure here because I'm exhausted and then the minute that I even have that you know thought in my mind the you know the universe hears me and they're like oh shit she's about to jump off this ship we need to we need to send in reinforcements we need them to be specific and then you know thank you all for being the messengers and allowing yourself to be the messenger that the universe uses in order to get to me but like then y'all come out with very specific like please do not ever stop you know, putting these forecasts out, they're highly valuable. Please do not underestimate your power and, and your impact and, and the, the healing work in which you're doing, like very specific comments. So I guess the point that I'm getting at is that I, I'm right there with you. I feel like I'm at my wit's end. I feel like I'm done, especially, you know, with the business structure that I got going on here. And a lot of that is the Capricorn energy. It rules over our goals and rules over the structure of our lives and our ambitions and what it is that we need to do. And, you know, the Cancer energy is what we need to be doing for ourselves, to nurture ourselves, to take care of ourselves, to further our own growth, our, our own involvement. It's a, it's a private matter. And so, you know, I guess I'm just sharing this with you because, you know, I'm in this too. We're all going through it. I'm not special. I'm going through the same tough love life lessons as everyone else is. It just manifests in a different area of life for all of us. And for me, it is recognizing that I need to strike a better balance between what I need to be doing for myself 
and what I need to be doing for everybody else. And I think we could all very much relate to that, take some hints and clues from that, and again, get focused on what it is that we have been doing, what it is that isn't working, what it is that we could do differently to create a different result. So I'm preaching to the choir, but I'm also preaching to my own damn self. And please don't ever think that I, I speak from a, uh, what do they call it, a glass tower. Please don't sit here and think that I'm just preaching to you and that I'm not going through hardships and that I'm, you know, just not dealing with ascension symptoms. I haven't slept in four days. I'm going to be real with you. Um, for those of you that noticed, and many of you did, this full moon guide that I put out for Capricorn, it was just the old format. It was just a PDF booklet. Why? Because I burnt my voice out. I lost my voice for two days and that really messed up my personal sessions. It messed up my daily forecast. It messed up the content that I'm used to putting out for these particular moon events. And yeah, I was frustrated. I, I, I'm not going to say I cried over it because I'm not much of a crier, but I was in the whiny, oh, poor is me. What am I going to do? The pressure the roles, the responsibilities that I've made, that I have to other people, to my paying clients, that got to me too. But at the end of the day, you do what you can. And all I could do for the two days that I could not speak, and again, uh, over the last, I'll be real with you, um, I'm coming to you here Friday, uh, over the last four days, accumulatively, I've had five hours of sleep, okay? Does not feel good. I am not in a good space. Physically speaking, my body is going through a flare, as I know most of us are with these ascension symptoms. Um, I haven't been sleeping, doesn't put Marmar -mar in a good state of mind, and it makes me a little bit cray cray. And it makes me a little bit raw and vulnerable, and it makes me feel weak. And that's exactly what we need to be feeling right now in order to break those weaker parts down in preparation for us building ourselves up in a much better, much stronger way. That is what this Cancer Capricorn axis is all about. This is what this full moon in Capricorn is all about. So we're all going through it. And I just wanted to share that with you because, you know, you do what you can. And so I still honored my commitments. I still did what I had to do. It may not have been the, the version that I was hoping to produce and create and put out into the world over the course of this week. But guess what? Not everything goes the way that you think it should in your head. And sometimes you got to do what you got to do. And sometimes you just have to wave the white flag and say, guess what? I'm done. I'm giving up. But then you need to kick yourself in your ass and say, OK, we're not done. We just needed to whine and cry about it for a little minute. And now we got to get our shit together and we got to honor our responsibilities. We got to boss up. That is where we're at. So let me kind of pivot because I've been ranting and raving uh, for a little bit of time right now. Let's talk about some of the ascension symptoms. Let's talk about sleep. <laughs> I can't wait to go to sleep. I can guarantee you. I'm, I'm grateful that y'all are here in the chat Friday evening. Thank you so much. But I, I cannot wait for this particular live chat to be over. I need to go to bed. I need to try again. I need to get more than just an hour and a half, two hours sleep tonight. I have to try my best. Now, granted, we just had a major heat wave move through, and that contributed to a lot of the physical symptoms and flare-ups that I've been having in my own physical realm and has definitely impacted sleep as well. But, like, take a look at the Schumann resonance. My goodness. We knew that the energy was just going to come at us hot and heavy coming through the solstice gateway with this full moon and Capricorn just riding that solstice energy's ass. But I don't know that we expected that kind of energy coming at us. I certainly didn't expect that. But our sleep has been off for whatever reason, whatever, whatever you want to blame it on. We all have our own little, you know, things popping off here over the course of this last week. Sleep has not been, I, mean, I want to say sleep has not been our friend. Sleep is always our friends. They just haven't wanted to hang out with us very much as of late. Uh, I, I can't wait for my sleep friend to want to hang out with me again. I'm sure you do too. But that sleep state is definitely being disrupted. There's a lot of, I'm going to call it cold sweats taking place. Even when, I mean, with the heat wave we just had, it was just unreal. You couldn't even breathe that hot air. Um, but like, you know, there are other contributing factors disrupting our sleep state. But basically, karmically speaking, we just jump major timelines 
There are parts of ourselves that were lost in that transition as well, meaning that the memories that need to come kind of crashing back upon us, especially in our dreamscape, if you're lucky enough to sleep long enough to have a dream, um, they're coming back in an intense way. We have a lot to process. We have a lot to sort through. Again, we're in a water season. It's highly emotional, it's highly intuitive. There's a lot of flashbacks, there's a lot of memories. And especially in a dream state, that's when our, I'm gonna say unconscious self needs to process the content that is too heavy for our conscious selves to even deal with. So the sleep, I'm gonna say, probably going to be a little bit better as we move away from this full moon solstice point. I'm kind of waiting for uh, the moon to kind of, you know, get out of this Capricorn cancer axis because we really need that moon. I'm going to say in a different energy in order to get a little bit of relief here. But at the same time, the emphasis, the intensity, like we just went through a major energetic shift, if you will. And so as we get further away from this full moon energy, from the solstice energy, the sleep will return and the dream content will become uh, I'm going to say even more emotional as we kind of unpack and bring some closure to a lot of topics and themes that we now have to work in putting behind us. So those flashbacks can come at you during the day as well. And let me tell you, it's like you got PS PTSD from war times, right? It's almost as if some of these flashbacks, they're going to bring smells back. They're going to bring sounds back. They're going to bring just overall sensations back from the time in which you experience whatever it is that is flashing back, please understand how important these flashbacks are. They're giving you a different perspective to see that different version of self in a different set of eyes. And so, you know, it may knock your rate off your feet in some instances. They may be good memories and flashbacks. They may be bad memories and flashbacks. Either way, it's a part of your experience that needs a little bit of closure. And that's what we're here to do in this cancer season. Many relationships have popped off. I did briefly talk about that. We knew that they would. Venus in that Gemini energy always kind of creates division in relationship dynamics. But that square off with Venus and Mercury before moving into cancer energy, that square with Neptune, again, that was kind of like the, uh, I'm going to say, adding some fuel on the fire to some particular relationships that were desperately holding on to egoic wants, needs, and desires when there wasn't a karmic thread there to even be woven. And so the amount of relationships that have popped off and in some cases fallen apart altogether over the last of this week, amazing to me. And again, such finality. Some situations and circumstances for my clients are just unreal that they went through. And it's almost as if like, you know how sometimes relationships you can break up and then it's like, oh, it's not that bad. Let's talk our way through it. Let's get through it. Let's try again. No, I'm talking like there was a finality brought to some of these relationship dynamics because again, the ego was in control. That ego picked that person out of trauma bonding, out of attachments, out of the pain and trauma that the inner child found familiar in another individual. They were not based off of, I'm going to say, positive soul growth and evolution type of energy. They were keeping you stuck in the egoic pattern and programs that we've been working so hard to try and, you know, shut down and to override in a lot of ways. And let me just say that whether you're in a relationship or not, whether it popped off in a difficult point or not, each and every angle that you move right now you are having your boundaries tested. Why? Well, cancer energy is all about boundaries. Why? Well, because the cancer energy has us intervening in other people's lives, has us so distracted with what we think other people should be doing that we fail to recognize our own damn selves. And typically speaking, especially if you have, you know, your son in cancer or your big three in cancer, you would know that the want, need, and desire to be there, to be needed, to save other people is so strong that you abandon yourself every damn time. Let's talk about the inner child work going on right now. How many people are feeling certain aspects in their life 
that is illuminating the wounds that they felt as a child. This is why we do the inner child work in cancer season. That's why the Capricorn energy is the adult. We need to become the adults that we wished would have came and saved us when we were a kid. That's the whole point of this healing journey is to become the person that you wish you had around to save you. Spoiler alert, nobody is coming to save you. You must learn how to save yourself. This is what this is all about. But the boundaries that are being tested is to show us where it is that we've been abandoning ourselves. Many people think, especially in relationship dynamics, that they have abandonment issues, that they will do anything and everything just to make that person stay, even if that person is wrong for them, even if that person abuses them and does horrible things or says horrible things or whatever the case may be, mishandles, mistreats them in every respect of the word. They go to these lengths because the pattern that they're actually manifesting in their relationship dynamic is meant to mirror back to them how many times that they didn't show up for themselves, how many times they abandoned themselves, how many times they've dimmed their own light, how many times they've let other people have power over who it is that they are, how it is that they think, how it is that they act and what it is that they do and pursue in their physical realm. This is a restructuring of power. This is a restructuring of self. Yes, we had certain situations pop off in our physical realm. That was to illuminate us, to wake us up, to make us a little bit more, I'm going to say, concentrated on focus on what the hell is going on, right? It may not make sense, but that's okay. It's not meant to. It's meant to push us inward. It's meant to open up those wounds to make us fully aware of the wounds that are still alive and well within us that we initially created or had created within us when we were a child and how that particular program has dictated every single choice that we have made in our adulthood. So again, Pluto in that Aquarius energy is attempting to return the sovereignty, the power, the control back to the individual, back to the people, right? It starts with us. If you are looking out in the world and you're saying, oh my goodness, what a dumpster fire that is. Well, we have to be the change in the world that we want to see. It all starts within us. When we vibrate at a vibration of frequency and energetic signature that is higher than some of what other people are vibrating, we set the grid down for that level of energy, which means that everybody now has to do the work to rise up with the me median of the energy that the collective is now having. If we were to all do our part, if we were to all do the work within ourselves, we would essentially watch the world outside of us change miraculously because we would all be vibrating at a higher frequency to create the change in the collective that we are struggling right now to want to see. And so what does that mean? It means that we have to have better boundaries. It means that we have to have a greater willpower, a greater discipline. It means that we have to restructure, rebuild, re-strengthen who it is that we are, taking the fragmented parts that got illuminated in Gemini season, squeeze them back together to a merging point, to a place of wholeness and completion here in cancer season. Let me just remind you, Leo season comes after cancer season. That's the heart and soul of the Zodiac. That's when we're in alignment with our authentic vibration and frequency. That is when we want to go out in the world. We want to have fun. We want to be seen. We want to be heard. Cancer season is the introverted part of life that we need to have to put ourselves back together in a way that feels safe and secure and stable after all the, all the shit shows that just went on. We build ourselves back. We build a brand new foundation of self. Then we go out to play. Then we want to be seen. Then we want, want to be heard. We want to leave our mark on the world around us. That takes place in Leo season, but we're not there yet. We have some work to do. And so, yeah, it feels heavy. Feels like a form of punishment. Feels a little bit like a harsh reality check. Feels like what the F, like what the sweet Jesus F is even going on? What are we doing? Where are we going? How did this happen? How can I fix it? There's so many different aspects to this. And again, we are not in the state of clarity right now that we want to be in. That will come in the coming of weeks. Yes, it makes us sick to our stomach. I talked last week how we were about to get the bubble guts. 
I don't know about y'all, but I haven't been able to eat in a couple of days. Yes, that goes hand in hand with the not sleeping and with the, you know, autoimmune physical symptoms of the energy, the ascension symptoms that we're going through. It's all part, part and parcel. It all makes sense. However, you know, worry, okay? When you worry, when you have anxiety, that affects the nerve, the nervous system, period. But think of all the nerves that you have in your stomach. Cancer season rules over the stomach. And so not necessarily the stomach. There is, you know, the lungs and the chest and the breast and the whole thing. There's a whole astrology chart on what season rules over what parts. But essentially, I want you to think about the mother role because that's what cancer energy is all about. Mothers worry, right? They are sick to their stomachs with worry over their children, over their partners, over the world around them. Again, why we become so distracted with external influences and takes the time, the energy, the concentration away of what we need to do for ourselves. This is why we're building ourselves up to a place of emotional safety, security, and stability, but we're not there yet. Right now we're gaggy about it. We're nauseous as all F. We're craving things that we never craved before. And we're disgusted by some of the things that we've been eating for a very long time. Not to mention the fact that we have this headache, this sinus pressure, this head pressure. Now, granted, moving out of Gemini energy and the further that away that we get from it, the head pressure, the sinus pressure is going to subside. But have you all noticed that your nose is leaking? Uh, a certain, I'm not, I'm not even going to call it snot because it's water snot. We're in a water season, so everything is watered down. We're coughing up chunks of phlegm. Okay, there's there's this lung pressure. We're shallow breathers at this point because we're in a state of panic. We're in a state of anxiety, watching things end, watching things close. We're worried. We're anxious. We're shallow breathers. Get that breath work back into the mix. But the head pressure, the sinus pressure, that is still kind of indicating that like we feel like we're trying to process something that is never going to be made sense of, you know, and especially you can't make sense of the spiritual karmic situation and circumstances that we're currently dealing with, you will intellectually never make sense of the metaphysical realm. But we're trying, our ego self is saying, oh, I'm confused. Oh, and again, I don't know why everybody, you know, we have to learn to be confused. The fact that we walk around sometimes thinking that we know things and that we know everything and that we're not confused is just bizarre to me. Like, why do people resist being confused? Do you understand that confusion is the darkness that we need to sit in in order to have a light bulb moment and epiphany that is going to totally change the game? So don't resist the confusion. Lean into it. Oh, man, I am hella confused about my life. Can't wait to figure this out. But remove the pressure from it because it is going to unfold. It is going to reveal itself. That's how it works. So if you if you stop putting a negative energy and attaching that negativity to what confusion is supposed to do for you, then guess what? It's an exciting thing to be confused. You're not supposed to know it all. You know, confusion, it's like watching a movie. Why would you watch the movie if you know the movie, and you know how it's going to end, right? It's the confusion that creates the suspense. It's the confusion that creates the interest. Adopt that type of mindset and you won't find confusing parts of your life to be this punishment, to be this torture session, if you will. Um, what I also want to say is, is that the confusion is needed in order for a revelation to happen. And so you should be excited that a revelation, a light bulb moment, an epiphany is on its way. You just need to be more patient with the process. I know Mars over there in Taurus energy. We got we got lots of patience for our long term goals. We have zero patience for our inability to have an understanding in the here and now. Um, again, we're slowing down that acceleration in time that pushed us through Gemini season. We hit that brick wall. That's why many of us are still in the what the F is going on, because it's almost like we were going you know, we were we were on the highway, we were going at a good speed. And then all of a sudden we had to jam on the brakes. Right. And we're our bodies still haven't acclimated the fact that we're at a standstill right now because we were just moving like 100 miles an hour. And then we came er, to a stop. Now we're confused. Why did we come to a stop? Where are we going? When can we start driving again? Why did it happen? What's going on up ahead of us instead of just saying, OK, we need to just slow down. 
We need to just sit here for a minute. We need to gain our bearings here. And all of our questions are going to be answered once the car starts moving again. It's just in this full moon Capricorn energy, we are at a standstill. We are at a gridlock. Yes, it can trigger some anger and agitation because we have convinced ourselves that we have to constantly be in a forward movement. We have to constantly be working towards something. We have to constantly be productive. We have to constantly see progress. That is just an illusion of the ego programming, my friend. What you have to do is just be. Just be. Be in whatever it is that you're in and flip the script in the most positive ways every single time and just accept that this is part of the path. This is part of the movie. This is part of the struggle. You can't have action, 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 action all the time. You need a storyline to support the action parts, okay? Right now, we're in the storyline. We're just trying to figure out the storyline right now. We just started this new movie, okay? So the bloating and the puffiness. Yes, we're, we're carrying some water weight. We will be carrying water weight throughout cancer season, especially in your face, especially in your fingers. Puffiness, bloating, bubble guts. We are essentially having a recalibration of the central nervous system, of our sensory experience. That's why smells are off. Again, mostly nauseous. Uh, lights are way brighter than they usually are. The sun is, uh, well, we know that the sun has been going through its own change and transformation, but the sun is putting off some weird ass patterns, some weird ass heat. Sounds are louder, are crisp, are a little bit weird, if you will, because our sensory system is going through an upgrade. This is overstimulating our central nervous system. That's why many of us are having flares with the ascension energies coming in um, because we're going through a recalibration. This happens every single time we boss up, happens every single time we timeline jump, happens every single time we have a renewal in our karmic contracts. It is a cycle. It is a pattern. It has happened before. It will happen again. This is just what we're going through. I talked about the leg cramps, especially at night with those growing pains. That's likely to continue. And a lot of that is A, because we are going through growing pains. B, we don't know the path in which we're walking. So we're when we're in our unconscious realm, our physical form is kind of going through the steps or the energy, if you will, the movements of trying to walk forward. We're not being able to walk forward. And so what happens? It's like we kick our toe off the corner of the table and suddenly we have major pain taking place in our lower extremities. Um, also consider this, we are in a water season. We are at a pause. We are trying to keep our head above water. What happens when you're treading water? Your legs get tired pretty quick. And so eventually in cancer season, we will learn that, hey, maybe we should stop treading water and we should just float on our back. That would be easier, but that would require us to surrender. Many of us not ready to, to surrender right now. Many of us grasping at whatever element of power and control we have left, we have available to us in this present moment. And many of us will tread water until we're absolutely exhausted. The goal is to just be. The goal is to float. The goal is to 100% surrender to the energies that are trying to push us in a different direction. We are going to experience neck and shoulder pain. A lot of that comes with the roles and responsibilities that are very much being pressurized on us right now, especially with the full moon in Capricorn. That's going to be some residual effects kind of carrying us into the beginning of the week. There is going to be, I'm going to say, um, some headaches that may stem from that as well. Some jaw issues that stem from that particular pain concentration in our neck and in our shoulders. We just have to shake it off. We have to dance. We have to, you know, clap our hands when they say happy. You know, it doesn't matter if you're happy right now or not. Clap your hands anyways. It moves the energy out of the upper part of the body. We have to understand that we are bearing a lot of karmic weight that may not make sense to us, may never make sense to us, but we're bearing it. Nonetheless, we can feel it in our physical form, which leads me to the last thing that I want to talk about and I feel like this is going to make a lot of sense to a lot of people just because, again, I already talked about the inner child work that comes with cancer season versus us needing to be the adults that we wish that we had to come save us as children with the roles and responsibilities that being an adult actually comes with. What we're dealing with here is Peter Pan syndrome. There is a part of us that does not want to grow up. 
that does not want to accept the change, that does not want to accept defeat, that does not want to boss up and take accountability and responsibility over our own damn selves, over our own energy, over our own actions. That is the child, the inner child work that gets triggered and activated with cancer season. Peter Pan never wanted to grow up. He wanted to be a lost boy forever. But the lost boy syndrome means that you are kind of predisposed to other people having power and control over you, constantly wanting to burst your bubble. If you are choosing to live in a delusional state of non-acceptance of the situations and circumstances that you 100% had a hand in creating due to the egoic programming and your wounded childhood self, taking the initiative to repeat the patterns of pain and trauma that you were exposed to as a child. If you are not willing to do the work within yourself, you will stuck in that lost boy stage forever. You will be stuck in a state where everybody is going to be poking and prodding at you, testing your boundaries in order to break you down so that you will open up to doing things in a different way. Peter Pan syndrome. The one thing that Peter Pan had going for him is that he was able to really kind of sit in the childlike curiosity, that playfulness, that energy of fun, even while dealing with some of the hardships in his external realm that he did not have power and control over. Many of us have lost that ability. Leo season is going to kind of renew that childlike playful energy in us again, but because the inner child and cancer energy is more illuminated to the pain and the trauma that we accumulated in our childhood upbringing, there is not a whole lot of play. There is not a whole lot of creativity. There's not a whole lot of curiosity. And so the minute that you can push yourself into that childlike demeanor where we understand that life isn't fair, but we also understand that we can't sit around and cry about it, that we do have options and opportunities available to us to be the adult that we needed when we were kids, we have the option to grow up and to grow out of that naivety, of that, I hate to say innocence, because I think we all need a little bit of that innocence. But sometimes, you know, we really do just need to be the adults that we were designed to be. So I'm going to welcome you to invite that the pros of that childhood aspect back, meaning playful energy, creative energy, curiosity, and really just kind of identify through the whining, through the complaining, through the victimhood mentality that many of us are sitting in under this full moon in Capricorn, where it is that we have every single opportunity to accept life as it is and not for the way that we wish it would be, to boss up, to stop whining, to stop crying, and to actually do something about our current circumstances. So guys, that is all that I wanted to cover this week. I thank you so much for being here. I thank you so much for tuning in. I thank you so much for showing up for me, but mostly I thank you for showing up for yourself. I wish you the most beautiful full moon in Capricorn that you could possibly have bossing up to new aspects within self. And I'm just gonna send you all kinds of love. Thank you for tuning in and we'll talk to you soon.